You ever heard of Billy Blank? Big tie bow guy. He's the guy who invented the whole tie bow thing. His studios used to be right down there. You walk into Billy Blank studio and all along the banner on the top of his studio it says faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. And what that basically means is you could be thinking and believing and dreaming and doing all you want but if you don't put it into gear and do something about it, it ain't gonna happen. We are the architects of our life to a certain degree. I just want to put this into perspective for you. Well, how do I know the dreams I have are really mine? How do I know that this is really my plan and my purpose? How do I know these things? You want to first of all realize that if it's in you, it's part of you. Now, how do I know if it really is part of me or maybe some stupid kid did this? Meaning you at a younger age putting all these dreams in you. All right? I call it the compression factor. And the compression factor basically means is when you take something that you're interested in and you want to know whether it's real or not, you compress it. That means you take everything and you put everything on it and you squeeze it. You get into prayer about it, you get into meditation about it, you spend some time with it, and you squeeze it to see if that's really what it is that's all about. Now what does that mean? Okay, so Kyle comes up to me and he goes, Hey Clay, um, you know, thinking about maybe catching uh, Lakers on Tuesday. Okay? I go, yeah, okay, cool. No problem. All right, great. Let you know. Great. Bye. All right. Happens all the time. Now, here's what compression is. Okay, Kyle says, hey Clay, I'm thinking about uh, catching the Lakers on Tuesday. You want to come? I go, you know something, Kyle? I'm free Tuesday. And he goes, oh, oh okay. And I said, what time? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't really have the tickets yet. Well, well I mean, well, what are you doing? Because I'm free Tuesday and I can meet you. Why don't we meet at this little place on the corner? See what's happening? I'm, I'm compressing it. And I'm finding out what it's really made of to see what's really there. And that's what you do when you get these dreams and you go, okay, well, is this of me? Well, let me move into it and see. Let me start doing things about it to see what really produces itself coming out of this. And then you start chasing the truth. And the truth might lead you away from what you thought it was or it might pull you further into it. That's how you challenge it. But when you're doing this stuff, guys, you, there's two very important ingredients that you have to have. And this is what we're talking about is we're talking about courage and belief. One thing to believe something, but it's another thing to have courage. And there's something powerful about courage. And you've got to understand where does courage come from? Well, shouldn't I just have it? Or I'm either courageous or I'm not. No, it gets conjured up. And there are things that are dampen your courage, and there are things that will weaken your courage. I used something that happened to Sue not too long ago as an example of how this stuff manifests itself. And it's got a really cool ending. All right? And this is what it was. There was a screening of Up in the Air, and George Clooney was going to do the Q&A at the end of it. And so Sue came, a couple other friends, and we went, and we were sitting, I said, come on guys, let's go to the front. And we were like two rows from the front to watch the movie. So we watched the movie, and after the movie's over, George Clooney comes out with the director and one of the other cast members, and they do the Q&A. And after the Q&A, I mean, I go to these things, I know what happens. If they open the stage, there's an opportunity to go up and meet them, and you can get your picture taken with them. And so I said, uh, so they, they did the Q&A, and it was like, hey, they're going to do this. And they did it, and Clooney's hanging around. He's being like, oh, Sue, come on, get up there. Get your picture taken with George Clooney. She's like, no, I don't know. I said, I said come on. Sue, so no, I don't know. There's all this resistance. All this resistance. And she didn't, but I knew she wanted it, but she wouldn't do it. And I'm like, come on, so hurry up. There's, there's, there's people, you got to get in there. If you don't get in there, it's too late. We're in the second row. Let's go. Let's get your picture. Well, and she was saying, yeah. And I don't know. I don't want to do it. All right, you don't want to do it. Oh, my daughter would really get a kick out of that if I got the picture. Well, come on, Sue. And she said, well, no. And she's up there treading water, and she's stalling, and, uh, and she's got all this stuff going on. And then people just start flooding George. And then by that time, I said, well, then let's go. And she goes, no, I really want to go. I said, what are you going to do? She's 10 people deep. We're not going to get to them now. You missed your window. It's over. Well, no, no, I want to say, all right, let's go see. So we're standing there and standing there. And I said, we're not going to get anywhere. And the friends we were with are sitting down. They're like, whatever. You know, what are you going to do? Sue, you missed it. All right, let's get out of here. And we left, and she was really bummed. She was bummed. She was very, very bummed because she was thinking, wow, you know, I mean, well, you know, not that she's like some George Clooney, he's some idol in her life, but, you know, it would have been cool. I'm going to just put a little insert on a Tony Robbins teaching because one of Tony Robbins' platforms is a pleasure-pain principle that applies to us as, as human beings, and that is that we will do one of two things. People are motivated to either seek pleasure or to avoid pain, and they will factor out the combination to see which one is less painful. Now what that means is if you've got free tickets to go to Disneyland, but you've got to get off work, it's going to cost you this, it's going to be a pain, and it's going to be, you go, just screw it. It's too much work to go. You will give up the pleasure 
because the pain will become too great. Does this make sense? And that's just how we, we, how we roll. So, so, like, here she is. She's all bummed out now. And, okay. And it's, it's kind of a bummer deal. And she wish she had done it. All right. I go home. And I find out that there's another screening. Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I believe. And now here's Clooney showing up at 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon right down the street from her house. They say lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. No, it struck closer to her house. So I go, Sue, Clooney's doing another Q&A. So now I, Sue, you got a shot at him. And now here's the deal. It's at the arts and science place. You got the people out front and getting into these things is not easy. It's easier to go to the moon than to get past these people because you got to have the credentials, you got to show you got to make a reservation. But she's motivated because she's getting a second shot because she knows how painful it was to have missed out on that opportunity. And now, Sue, who doesn't usually do these things, is going to leave her Pilates class and hightail it over there after the movie's already played and try to catch George without a ticket, without an invite, and not even being a member of the nominating committee. So she goes over there, boom, and she hits those people at the front desk. And the way that I see the story happening is because I know about human behavior. She's all jacked up. She's got a goal, and she's going to get after it. She's on a mission, and she's going to make it happen. So she goes to the front desk or whatever, and they're like, do you have your number? Do you have your pass? She's going, I just want to, I just want to go for the Q&A. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And my feeling is that drive and that tenacity and that desire to want it bad enough got her past that, that, that panel to get her into the theater. So now here she is. She's in the theater, full house. The credits are coming down and she doesn't have a seat and she's standing in the back of the house in the aisle waiting for that opportunity to get a picture with George Clooney. The Q&A goes on, they do their little deal, blah, 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 and the Sue's calculating her moment to get down there to be first. She's not waiting, she's not gonna miss the boat this time. Went all the way out of her way to do this. They finish the Q&A and she rails it right there to the front of the stage, gets on up there, gets George, hands somebody the camera and says, can I get a picture with George? And bam, she gets this picture with George Clooney. And the funniest part of the whole thing is they weren't doing meet and greets in that screening. And she was the only person who went on stage. Now, here's a girl that doesn't go in for these things, wouldn't do it when the opportunity was sitting right there. George was as close as Colin is to me. All she had to do was walk up and get her picture taken and she didn't do it because there wasn't enough going behind her to get her to do it. But now, here's an impossible situation, and she makes it happen. What is that? And that's what I want to talk about, and that's what I want to hone in on, because that's the power that we all have when we are focused properly, and our goals and our belief is set in the right place. She knew she could have her picture taken, because she saw it happen two days earlier. Even when it wasn't allowed, she got it done. Now, what do you do to get that kind of power and energy working for you? Because those voices are going to go, no, 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 don't, don't. So you've you got to go after the things that you're really wanting and believing for, but you've got to believe them and then have the courage to move on them. And when you do that, you can start writing your own ticket. You can start calling your own shots. You can start claiming your own things. Now, granted, are you going to be a superstar like this all the time? No, I'm not. Sometimes I'm like, oh. Want to do that, and you miss an opportunity, but you just don't want it to happen too often because you're going to miss out on too many opportunities, where you can be getting all kind of things happening for you and getting doors to open for you if you're if you're that strong to be able to do that and follow it up and have the goods to be there. So I'm encouraging you to ramp up your belief of the things that you're looking to do and aspire and accomplish. And then have the courage to go out there and get after them and do it. Be bold. Be bold. Why not you? Why not you here now? It's not them over there later. It's you here now. Just got to get your head screwed on straight.